Welcome to iLector Online. Now let's put into practice what we've learned about the apparent power and the power factor. Let's say that we're given a circuit and we're given that the voltage in the circuit as a function of time is 120 times the cosine of 100 pi t minus 20 degrees and that the current in the circuit as a function of time is equal to 4 times the cosine of 100 pi t plus 10 degrees. Realizing that these are the phase angles of the voltage and the current and knowing what we understand about the equation for the average power in the circuit and the impedance in the circuit and the understanding of what the apparent power and the power factor is, can we find the following four things? The apparent power, the power factor, the impedance in the circuit, and the capacitor in the circuit. Because as we will find is that this appears to have capacitive reactants. And so what we're going to do is also find the capacitor in the circuit. Now, if we take a look at the phase angles, minus 20 degrees for the voltage phase angle and plus 10 degrees for the current phase angle, we can already draw a phasor diagram with the current and the voltage phasors. So 10 degrees, positive 10 degrees for the current, negative 20 degrees for the voltage. So you can see that the phase angle, the voltage minus the current, would be a minus 30 degrees, a negative phase angle, which then indicates if the phase angle is negative, that the power factor must therefore be leading, which means the current is ahead of the voltage, it leads the voltage, therefore it must be a capacitor of reactants in the circuit. We can then also draw a phasor diagram for the impedance. Notice that this would be the resistance in the circuit, the capacitor of reactants in the circuit. We already know since it's downward because we have a negative 30 degree phase angle for the impedance. So let's go ahead and find the apparent power, which would be one half of the voltage max times the current max. And so we can say that the power factor, uh, uh, the apparent power, I'm not looking for the power factor, the apparent power is equal to one half times voltage max times current max. And so this is equal to one half times voltage max would be 120 volts and current max would be four amps. That would be 480 divided by 2, which is equal to 240. And the units for the apparent power was volt amperes, V times A for volt amperes. Next, we want to find the power factor. And the power factor is equal to the cosine of the difference of the phase angles of the voltage and the current, which means this is the cosine of phi. And so this is equal to the cosine of minus 20 degrees over here and subtract from that 10 degrees which is equal to the cosine of minus 30 degrees which is let's see the square root of 3 over 2 which means that this is equal to uh, that would be 0 0.866 for the power factor and again we can say that this is leading because we have a negative phase angle negative phase angle means the current comes first therefore the power factor is leading Next, we want to calculate the impedance. Z is equal to, by definition, we can see that the voltage max with a phase angle for the voltage divided by current max with a phase angle of the current. So in this case, that would be 120 volts divided by 4 amps for the maximum values of those two. And then we take that and we multiply that times the phase angle of theta sub V minus theta sub I. And so that 4 goes into 120, that would be 30, that would be 30 with a phase angle of, well, that would be minus 20, minus 10, that would be minus 30 degrees. And so if we want to write that in the real imaginary format, we can say that Z is equal to, let's see here, the cosine of 30, 30, take the cosine, we multiply it times 30, that gives us 25.98. 25.98 for the real part and for the imaginary part it's going to be negative so we have 30 take the sign that would be one half to a negative 15 and of course that would be in terms of ohms so this here would be the impedance on the circuit right there and now we need to find the capacitance hmm let's see here capacitance well I can say that x sub c, x sub c is equal to negative 1 over, uh, that would be omega times c. 
Maybe that would be the best way to deal with it, okay? So x sub c, that would be this right here, because we know that impedance z is equal to r plus j times the reactors. In this case, we know we're going to have capacitor reactants. And of course, the capacitor reactors would make that negative. So therefore, x sub c is equal to negative 1 over omega c. That means that c is equal to negative 1 over omega times x sub c. And so this is equal to minus 1 over omega. We can find from over here. That's 100 pi. And then we multiply that times a negative x sub c, because x sub c is going to be negative direction. And that's a minus 15. And so that is equal to the capacitance, therefore, is equal to, let's see, 100, oops, 100 times pi times 15. Take the inverse of that. And that looks like it's 212.2 microfarads, 212.2 microfarads for the capacitor in that circuit, presuming it has a single resistor, single capacitor, and that would be the capacitance. So notice that by using these few equations and the concept of apparent power and power factor, and given the voltage and the current, in the circuit in the time domain, we can quickly analyze what the entire circuit looks like as far as current, voltage phasors, the impedance, and the capacitance, power factor, and the apparent power, just like that. And so it actually is not that bad once you get the hang of this, and that's how it's done.